Facebook. Uh, we are live on YouTube. Uh, we are live in so many different platforms. So everybody out there, welcome to Art to Heart. I'm so honored today. Excited to see you all. This happy Friday mm -hmm. afternoon, <laughs> end of the week. And what best way to end the week than to admire the incredible works of my guest, Mary E. Morgan, our dear master artist. Welcome, Mary. How are you doing? Oh, I'm great, Viviana. Thank you so much. This is so fun to yes. be live. <laughs> yes. It's great. It is. It's a lot of fun because we get to interact with the audience. So if you're out there, make sure that you send comments. We want to hear your feedback during this show. So Mary, there's so much going on with your work. Um, we have featured you in Art to International magazine uh, many times. You have such an incredible career that I don't know where to start, but usually this is where I start because I know there's artists out there who are just beginning or there's art lovers that are seeing the work behind you and are wondering, how do you start in this journey? How was your, that spark, you know, that you said, okay, mm. I want to be an artist. This is what I'm going to do with my life. Well, that spark surely started very, very young. When I was just a little girl, I was sitting on my front porch and looking at the sunset and said, oh, I got to paint that. So I went out and got my paintings, set them on the front porch, and I painted our sunset straight from my porch because it impressed me. But you know, Viviana, it took a long time from that little girl to uh, this adult to become wow. an artist. And uh, I really never took any art classes until I lived in Zurich when I was a senior in high school. And that was my first opportunity to take a, a formal art class. And so that was the very, very beginning of getting me excited about the materials, the paint, the colors. You know, it was just all so new to me. And I just loved being in Zuri because it was just such a beautiful place to see nature. And, and I think nature is a primary influence in my work. But um, the painting behind me is certainly about nature. As you can see, I don't need to move my camera, I know, but it you can see some of those colors yes. um, that are nature in the painting behind me. That's Does that answer your question, Viviana? Does that, is that? <laughs> yes, <laughs> so now I'm, I realize how important for you was, uh, and that's important because not all artists take that journey and it takes longer, but you, for you it was important to get ready to prepare to study and I admire that. Um, why was that important for you? Well, it was important because when I started teaching art, which was what I got my degree in, was a, a teaching certificate, and I started teaching it, it was just a different world altogether to teach. And so I had to continue to study artists. I had to study art history. I had to really know my mediums. And so I took a lot of workshops and I just went to town. I just did what I had to do in order to be a good teacher. And so that's what really propelled me into being an artist was first teaching art because mm -hmm. you just have to know so much to teach. And so getting my education, going back and getting my master's degree was certainly uh, phenomenal at my age to be able to teach full time and go to school and get that upper level degree. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Was there during those years that you were starting at the beginning of your career, any artist that was an influence or any old master that you admire that you consider was somewhat of an influence? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, we took students when I was teaching up to New York. And so I was so fortunate to be able to take students for years to see the MoMA and to look at and study the artworks up there. And, and so certainly Kandinsky was one of my very first influences yeah. because of his color theory, because I was so interested in color and so loved what he said and wrote about color 
that it influenced me because I said, this is what I'm trying to say. It's what he's saying about his art. And so Kandinsky was really my very first influence. And then, of course, the great Georgia O'Keeffe, um, going to see her place where she lived and worked was phenomenal. And I love that she pushed women. She really yes. propelled women to be artists and her influence went far and wide to many, many women out there. Yeah. And so I really give her a lot of credit for influencing me and uh, just making me able and wanting to be an artist like she was. And so then uh, there are others, all the abstract expressionist painters, uh, de Kooning, uh, Joan, Joan Mitchell. I saw a full show of hers in New York that really blew me away. I just couldn't believe it. I was just so impressed with her style, her large works. And then there's Helen Frankenthaler, who is also a huge influence with large works. And uh, you can just go down the list of the abstract expressionist painters, Jackson Pollock, the one mm -hmm. and only Jackson Pollock was yeah. absolutely influential also. Wow. And it's great that we have, I mean, I, for me, it, that's why it's so important to support the artists because I feel that we need to showcase the younger masters, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the artists of today so that the younger generations get that, that influence, that positive influence. And yes. so you're one of those, you're one of my inspirations, Mary, I have to tell okay. you. <laughs> Well, that's that's great. I love that. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy. You know how that is. I just love yeah. to hear that. But I am also inspired by some of these young artists that are online and Instagram. Yeah. I just blown away by some of their techniques and they work so hard. And I think hard work is really the key. Yeah. Don't you don't yeah. you think it takes a lot of hard work? Commitment and every, I mean, I, I don't know. I think it's not work because that's what we love to do, right? As mm -hmm. artists, it's fun. Uh, but it's that commitment of doing it again and again and again to to perfect your style, to develop your style, to, to uh, you know, rise above right. everything. So, yeah, yeah, it is work. It is work. Commitment every day, not giving up, right? Yes, and just continuing for me to um, explore, kind of, uh, ex you know, it can be experimental, it can be spontaneous, but sometimes I just like those days when I can get in the studio and just play, play a little bit and figure out what's next. <laughs> that well, interests me. <laughs> I'm going to show what you do because this is so much fun. I found these canvases here and I said, I have to share this um, with my audience today. This looks like a lot of fun. And uh, let's put it on the screen. Let's see. Oh. And then you can tell me about this because this is like you were having fun doing all these canvases. Look at this. Yes. This yes. is totally outside the box. I mean, what was going through your mind? What happened this day? <laughs> Well, Viviana, I tell you what, these are um, really fun to do. They really are. But the, the history behind these goes back several years, back into the early 2000s when I was creating shape pieces made out of paper and uh, watercolor, acrylic, and then I would put some resin on top to kind of make them archival and uh, hold their shape really well. And so I did a number of those early on, but these are current. These are of canvas and they really are different. You're right. They're really yeah. kind of, um, unique. And I know that I was influenced by Frank Stella's work that was totally shaped pieces and sometimes by um, Elizabeth Murray. Her pieces that were already shaped and, and you know, just incredible, incredible work. Yeah. And so the shapes kind of keep coming back in different forms. And this one that you're looking at right now is really about the ocean. We go to California every year and sometimes several times a year to see our children and other people that we know. And I am just really pulled in by the ocean and the water mm -hmm. and the influence of the colors of the water and the land of course it it has some um 
to me sunshine in it and yeah. I call it sunshine just because it's so colorful and, and bright. And when I see that on the water, it's just phenomenal. I, I love am it. truly impressed by that nature. Yeah, I love the movement. You captured the wave. I mean, you, you did capture that movement there. Um, but I, I totally love the spontaneity of this. Is this something that you plan beforehand or you just you know it's very spontaneous and you go with the flow with the inspiration of that day well it's a little of both i think okay. the the shape piece was determined and it how i shaped it was not controlled exactly but when the canvas is pliable you can move it around and then when i found the shape that i liked that represented what i wanted I staple that together so that it doesn't move and that it stays right. that way. And then I paint on top of that shape. Mm -hmm. And so it's the process of shaping the piece and then painting. Right. And I had already determined this was going to be about water. I didn't know exactly um, what the end product was going to be because I'm not a planner that way. I just kind of like the paint direct and tell me where it needs to go. Does that make sense to you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you go with it with intuition, inspiration. I love that. Yes. I love that. But when it's not a hundred percent controlled and you are like you allow for creativity to flow in that, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. There's, I could see uh, in this piece, I love these colors. I can get lost in this piece. I love to see it live. <laughs> oh, I wish you could. It's, this it's right way. here in my house. And I, I love it too, Viviana. It's one of my very, very favorite pieces of all time. And um, it the was color. influenced. It was influenced by nature also, but I don't know. Um, I read David Brooks' book, The Second Mountain, and I was influenced by what he said. Of course, he's a journalist. He writes so very well. And I was influenced by what he said about his life with The Second Mountain, as he calls it. And I thought, well, that's where I am, too. I'm in this second mountain of my career and my life. And so that's where the title came from. But I think actually it is a piece about nature. It's about night and day. The black background and some of the black coming back in represents the nighttime. And then the bright colors, of course, are daytime, daylight. And you can see hints of terrain and grass and rocks and sunshine. It's just... Um, like I always say, I don't plan this completely end to paintings. I'll let them go for a while. Then I go back and look at them. <laughs> and then I think, oh, does that need another layer? And, and so sometimes I use quite a few layers to get what I need uh, as the end product. Wow, that's important what you just said, because when you're creating, uh, it takes time to develop and artwork some people think that abstract artists just throw things in there and voila <laughs> the painting comes out and i'm 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 always have to explain that creating an abstract work sometimes is so much more challenging than you know creating a scene or a figurative work because it, it everything is coming out from you right everything i agree is, is i agree out. so you do have to step back from time to time you do. You have to let it rest, go back with fresh eyes, as I call it, fresh eyes. I used to tell students that, get away from it, go back to it. And I uh, have to do that myself. I have to be my own teacher. You know, sometimes I forget that. But it is good to step away and yes. then go back to it. Yes. Well, wow, these works are inspiring. Here is more... Um, I capture a totally different energy on this work. Uh, the black and white, of course, uh, speaks differently. 
What is this one about? Fight the good fight. Well, you know, Viviana, my heart is um, so strong with my spiritual and my worldview that this is a spiritual emphasis type of painting. And um, that comes directly from scripture, fight the good mm -hmm. fight. Because I think for me and for many of us, we are in a battle, so to speak, on this world, in this world between good and evil many times. Mm -hmm. And we have choices we have to make. And are we making the right choices? Are we doing the right thing? And mm. so that's where I got the title from this. Wow. Wow. Let's speak a little bit more in depth about this, because this is, for me, I'm passionate about this subject. <laughs> now you got me. Yes. So, there's so much going on, right, in the world. And I always say that artists are those who are, are bringing the good, the beauty, the peace, the joy to the world. Yes. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't mean that we don't have part of the other side also in our hearts. So how do you balance this when uh, there's so much going on outside and you want to balance, you want to bring something beautiful, joy, peaceful, um, to express it in your work? How do you balance what's happening out there and trying to bring this energy out to the world? You know, Viviana, I do a lot of meditation like you do and prayer. And I feel like when I go in my studio, I'm prepared to speak through my soul. And that's a hard thing for some people to understand. And that's okay. You don't have to be totally understanding of what I'm saying here. But I feel like the spiritual emphasis paintings I do come from my soul of, you know, what I'm going to say may seem strange also to some people, but a new birth, a new life through my Christian walk and what I think of as a, um, some people call it born again believer. That's okay. I don't use that term all the time, but I certainly am a believer and I believe that the things that I am about that are deep and in my heart come out in my work. And Thank I don't you. plan that either. I don't plan <laughs> when that's going to happen. <laughs> they do. They do. I want to take a pause and say thank you to David Fleshman, our dear master artist who is watching this interview. Thank you, David, for your support. We got a few comments, so I want to acknowledge Having creative mind, oh my gosh, I'm so amazed. Thanks for inspiring us, but they didn't give us a name. Thank you for supporting Mary and for loving her work. I love it too. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Mary. Great to see you. I'm a fan of your amazing work. Oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for your time and your interest, Viviana. And I, I feel your love too. Thank you. Yes, this this uh, interview is inspiring, not just because of the art, you know, and sharing your art, which is a big deal for me, but also um, letting the audience know that there's more to the artist than just the artwork. Uh, there's so much more that that comes and that happens in a canvas, in a photograph, in a digital work, in a sculpture. Whatever form on ex of expression is bringing, I'm always saying it brings everything that that artist live, right? Every life mm -hmm. experience, especially the spiritual journey, which sometimes we're not aware of, right? Sometimes um, we, you have arrived to an incredible level where, and also stage in your life when, where you acknowledge that journey. I think it takes courage, right, to acknowledge it takes, that. It takes courage, and it takes the Spirit of God working in your mm -hmm. life to be able to speak about Him. And I think, like you, Viviana, that God speaks to each of us a little bit differently because yeah. we're all very different people. Exactly. But that same Spirit is at work in many believers around the world 
And I thank you for bringing that up in my yeah. interview. Absolutely. I am a believer as well. I think that, I mean, there has been so many, even scientists like Albert Einstein, so many that oh, they were, you know, at all with creation. The more you research, the more you discover um, as a curator, as an artist, when you walk, even when you walk out in nature, there is no way <laughs> of not mm -hmm. feeling that oh at this mm -hmm. incredible creator uh, and and feeling ourselves as the perfect creation right uh, artists are the perfect creation i think you guys are like the the source you know that connection the artist is I that hope so i yeah. hope so i hope my art speaks to people to their soul Right. And that's and that's what attracts me to so many artists that I can see something that's not just fleeting in their work. It's solid and it's strong. Exactly. And exactly. and so that impresses me with other artists also, Viviana. Yes. Well, Mary, thank you so much for this moment, for this time. I'm so I'm honored every time that I have to uh, present you to our audience. We work, you know, very closely, but I never get um, over my starstruck <laughs> <laughs> with you and other artists that we work with because I, I'm really always amazed every time I discover something new. Um, I could be working with an artist for years, but it's I love the the reason why I love these interviews is because I myself I'm discovering something new each time so i thank you for that and for keeping us inspired for those who want to visit your work if you guys are watching out there mary's website is in the comments and the description also of this interview but just in case mary what is your website so that they hear it loud and clear artist at mary mcdowmorgan.com Okay, so that's your that's your email, artist at Mary McDowell Morgan dot com. Okay, because I have your website as Mary E Morgan dot com. Is that well, you can find it there also? That's a square okay. space. So I have two. But oh, the one okay. but the one where I can they can sign up for my newsletter is the artist at Mary McDowell Morgan dot com. And okay. I would love to have them sign my new, up for my newsletter. Yeah, and find out what's coming up next because there's a lot behind the scenes and there's a lot in the studio that you need to explore, guys. So thank you, Mary. Thanks for this moment. Thank you, Vivian. Thank have you. Have a and great day. <laughs> thanks, everybody out there who is watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. Enjoy yes. your weekend and visit Mary's website. And don't forget to stay very, very, very inspired.